Squash flour. Now, is it really worth the effort? Let's find out. Squash is something that we grow a lot of on the homestead. As many who have followed us for a few years on our sister channel, mother channel, whatever you want to call it, founding channel, uh, Hickory Croft Farm, know we do love our squash. A couple weeks ago, Chris did a video over on our Hickory Croft Farm channel, which we will link above. I think it'll end up over here. Uh, on making squash flour out of our green stripe Kershaw. It, I'm not going to spoil. You can go over there and watch that video if you'd like, but it was a success. We very much enjoyed it, but there was a few little concerns we had. So we're going to try something different over here on Pantry Living. So today we're going to use a different squash. We're going to use Canada Crookneck squash, which if you don't know much about this squash is very similar to butternut squash. They're Related. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to mimic what we did with the green stripe Kershaw squash as much as we can. So the first step is to peel this and basically weigh out three pounds. We, we had three pounds of the uh, Kershaw squash and we're going to try three pounds of this Canada Crookneck and we're going to see if there's any difference in what we get at the end and also if there's any difference in sort of flavor and that sort of thing. So that's the experiment today but we'll take you through the process. So we are steaming it today. Now you can roast it and it works the same way. We just like the steaming for this. I'm also not going to cut these up too small because they're going into the steamer. Uh, kind of two, three inch cubes or shapes, kind of whatever it, whatever it comes out as, it doesn't really matter too much. And one thing too about uh, cutting squash, we definitely like these hollow edged knives. They make a big difference on cutting through squash, especially the winter squash because they don't buy. And don't worry, none of this gets wasted because this is chicken food in this bowl. So there we go. We're just over, but basically three pounds. The nice part about a steamer is they're very, very simple to use. That's but they pretty. do unfortunately take a little bit of time. Pretty sure it's all gonna fit. Looks like it. All right, well, we've been about 25 minutes steaming the squash. It's ready. So the next couple steps are super simple. We're basically going to take our steamed squash. We're going to use the food processor, grind it up into basically like a paste or applesauce consistency. Then once we've got it ground up, we're going to take it, put it on the uh, tray as if we were making fruit leather, put it in the dehydrator, and we'll bring you back when we've got that done. It's time to get our squash mush out of the dehydrator. It's been in there for about 40 hours, I guess you could say. <laughs> Longer than it probably needed, but we got doing other things and forgot about it. So now we're back here and we're going to see just what we get out of that three pounds of Canada Crookneck squash as compared to the three pounds that we processed on the Hickory Croft Farm Channel with our Green Stripe Kershaw. I'm really hoping that we get more. Looks pretty similar. Yeah, at first glance, I'm thinking it's pretty much the same. It's a bit uh, rubbery or a bit more rubbery, like even though it's been in here for a long time than the other stuff was. But I'm going to break it up a bit. I'm going to taste a bit. Let's see what this tastes like. Squash? I don't know if it tastes like anything. We said that about the other one though. I do think actually that it is a bit thicker than what the other one was, so we might get more. But as you were saying, it is a bit more rubbery, which might not powder as well. On a total side note, as Chris is busy uh, breaking this up, these little Master Chef uh, grinders are awesome. Awesome for so much stuff. We actually have two of them, and we are always watching at thrift stores in case another one comes available. Round number one. I'm going to sift this next, just to make sure I don't have any bigger particles in there, but to be honest, it looks like it uh, broke up pretty good. To be honest, for the most part, that ground up pretty good, but you can see there is a few smaller, almost looks like sugar <laughs> in there. So they will go back in the grinder for round two. Well, there it is. So the one thing I'm going to say is the coffee grinder does grind some of it up, like you see over here, fairly fine. But a lot of it 
these are almost like little granules. It kind of almost looks like orange sugar. So we probably could run this through a bit, bit of a better grinder, i.e. something that would actually grind wheat, for example, into flour. And it might go a bit better, but the way we used it last time was in a gravy. And to be honest, it was really good for that sort of thickening quality. So I think it really depends on what you're planning to use it for. Now, we're still not sure what we're going to use this for yet. But before we do anything with it, we're going to measure it out and see how much we actually got out of this three pounds. Okay, so it looks like we basically, give or take a little bit, got a cup. So we're pretty sure, don't quite remember, pretty sure we were three quarters of a cup from the Kershaw squash. We'll which, write it down below. Yeah, we'll write it down below, but which does make sense because it's got a lot more water content in it. I will admit, I uh, licked some of this off my finger. It tastes pretty good, like considering that Canada Crookneck squash is not what I would call a sweet tasting squash when you just roast it. It's quite sweet done this way. So we're now, I guess, almost two weeks later and we're going to try out using the squash flour. Now we have used some as a thickener um, in soups and, and gravies and things like that, but this time we're really gonna break out the big guns. We're gonna try it in a pizza dough. So basically this pizza dough is very, very simple, very keto friendly, I suppose. Uh, it is eggs, cheese, squash flour, and that's basically it. There's some spices in there, but all in all, we're just going to throw it all together in a pot and then we're going to uh, let it cook before we then put all our toppings on. This is an experiment. You guys are along for the ride. I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but I'm really hoping it's good. They're going to bake for 10 to 15 minutes until they start to kind of go crispy around the outside. And then we will put our toppings on. All right, so we're starting our mixture off with what would be four large eggs but because we use silky eggs i actually went with six we find that three silky eggs equals about two regular chicken eggs two tablespoons of water one teaspoon garlic powder one teaspoon of onion powder and one teaspoon of oregano and basically we're going to whisk that up now we're going to add a quarter cup of our squash flour which is basically just dehydrated squash, vegetable powder. In it goes. So now we're going to let that sit for a couple minutes, get that squash flour absorbing some of that eggy liquid. And then we're going to add six tablespoons of cheese. It does call for Parmesan cheese. I don't have Parmesan cheese, so we're going with cheddar. I don't know if it'll make much difference, but that's what we're gonna go with and try. And then basically we're ready to uh, get this into the skillet. All right, so now you can see what those crusts look like out of the oven. They've had their first cook. That was 10 minutes. I didn't leave them any longer because I thought they looked pretty close to done and they were crisping really nice around the outer edges. So now we're going to put our sauce and toppings on these and uh, cheese and we're going to bake it up and see what happens. So stay tuned because we're going to taste test this and see how it goes. All right. Time to put these back in the oven for five to 10 minutes. We just need the toppings to kind of heat and the cheese to melt. So there's our finished pizza with the squash crust. Now hold tight because I did cut one up so that you could get a bit of an idea of what they're like. So there's our pizza. I will admit it's, it's floppy, but if you put your finger under there, you can hold it. You can see that there is sort of a doughy, flaky kind of uh, crust there. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it yet. I'm leaving that for Christopher to do first, but I just wanted to show you how it did cook up. I'm not sure if I can flip it over to show you, but uh, all in all, I think pretty decent considering there's no flour in there. All right. Moment of truth for the man who wants to no longer eat flour. I don't know how to describe it. It doesn't taste like squash. It doesn't taste like bread, but it does taste very good. So, I think it's good. Are you going to make it again? Mm, I would. And we've got more squash and we can grow more squash, so. So, squash flour is potentially a win? I think so.